the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice today, man. Come on, we're going to rejoice today and be exceedingly glad in this day, amen. Bless your name, Jesus. Amen. We thank God today for this day. We are ask you to all stand now as we bring our hearts and our minds and our spirits into one place. Amen. For this is a good day. For every day is a good day with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And this is the day that we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. For we, the word of God says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So we're going to rejoice in this day and for what God has done and what he's still yet going to do even before this day is even gone. So we thank God for that. And we come before you, Holy Spirit, this morning. And we thank you and we praise you. We exalt you, Lord. We said be exalted in this place. Be exalted, Holy Spirit, in this place. Lord, have your way today in this place. Be all that you, that you want us to be, uh, Father God, in this place. Help us to uh, strengthen us today, O oh God. Help us to be those that you would have us to be, Father God. Help us to move in that place of, of unity of the spirit, Lord, and the bond of peace. And we thank you, Lord God, for your word today. We thank you for the Holy Spirit today, Lord. We thank you for the anointing today. And we release the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place today. And we said move, Holy Spirit, even upon pastor today. In Jesus' mighty name, first lady today, Lord. The worship team today. Holy Spirit, we ask you now that you would have your way today in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. We plead the blood of Jesus over this place today. We plead the blood over your people today, Lord. And we just ask you that you release a powerful anointing, a supernatural anointing in this place today. Lord, we thank you for souls being saved today in this place. We thank you, Lord God, people being filled with the Holy Spirit in this place today. We thank you for the, the day of Pentecost, even though it was on last Sunday. But, God, we know every day is Pentecost, Lord, with you. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you today for that. We thank you that bodies will be healed today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you will touch people, Lord God. Minds will be regulated, O oh God. Your peace, Lord God, will fall upon your people today. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you and we praise you for it right now. Blind eyes will be opened today, O oh God, that they may see not only in the natural, but in the spirit, Father God. We thank you for the realm of the spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you have called us out of darkness, Lord, into your marvelous light. And we thank you for that right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind up any distractions today in this place, Lord. We bind up any distractions in this place that would hinder the word of God going forth today. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you adoration, Father God. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. The Lord, our provider today, Lord. We thank you that you're Jehovah's sick and new, Lord. The Lord, our, our sanctifier today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, our righteousness. We thank you today for that, O oh God. And we bless you and we praise you, O oh God, for what you're going to do in this place, Lord. And with your people today, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask you that you move, Lord God, in a mighty way in this place. Let your glory be revealed, Lord God, through the through the praise and worship today, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, strengthen Brother Tyrus, Lord, and the worship team today. We ask you, Lord God, let a powerful anointing, Lord, be upon them today, upon the worship team. In the name of Jesus, that they can bring you glory, they can bring you praise and adoration into this place, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for it right now. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name, and we give you praise for it, and we give you honor. And let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Do you have the joy of the Lord this morning? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's try that again. Do you have the joy of the Lord this morning? Shout hallelujah. 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 Yeah.
There's beauty in my brokenness. I got to love instead of pain. There's freedom though you capture me. I got joy instead of mourning. Say what? There's freedom. There's beauty in my brokenness. I got to love. I got to love instead of freedom though there's freedom though you captured me i've got joy i've got joy instead of morning say you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul yeah. you give me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul yeah. Down deep in my soul, there's beauty in, there's beauty in my brokenness. I got to love, I got to love instead of pain. There's freedom, though. there's freedom though you captured me. I got joy, I got joy instead of mourning. Come on, one more time. There's beauty in, there's beauty in my brokenness.
Just to be in his presence. Yeah. Say your presence is your presence. Oh.
Jesus. Jesus, you're the cloud that won't dry. If you're experiencing the Lord already this morning, if you've already felt him this morning, would you just hold your hand up? I've already felt the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. It's a sweet, sweet presence of the Lord in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. I want to say to you, um, happy Memorial's, Memorial Day. Um, for some, it's happy, and some, it's not. For us that are free... Um, it's a great day for those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to their family. Um, it could be a sad day. I ask if you would, everyone that would, if you don't mind, if you would stand all over the house of the Lord this morning as we um, sing. Uh, Minister Goodwin is going to sing the national anthem for us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the
Amen. You may be seated. Today we celebrate Memorial Day. You know, sometimes we, um, as churches over the years, have lost the emphasis of our role on emphasizing patriotism in our churches. I still believe that we should stand for the national anthem. You can, you can politicize it all you want to, but I believe it's out of respect for, one of, for the greatest nation on earth. Amen? Um, you go to other countries, you come back to the good old United States of America, and you are so glad to be back in, in the United States of America. There can be no question that a major price has been paid for our freedom in the United States of America. The cost for our freedom is high. Our freedom to worship and speak as we see fit costs many men and women their lives. From our earliest roots as a country, battles and blood have been the currency that has been paid for the precious freedom that we celebrate. There's no doubt that there are people gathered in this assembly this morning that have suffered the loss of a parent, sibling, friend, son, or daughter serving our country that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, their life. And today we choose to never forget by celebrating their act of heroism on Memorial Day. Today is a special time for us to come together and honor all those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Freedom is not free. So maybe in this assembly this morning, there's someone here that has a family member that has paid the ultimate sacrifice in serving their country. If that if that fits you if, you, if you have a family member that has gone home to be with the Lord as a result of being in battle and they lost their life in battle, I'm going to ask you if you would stand. One there, one there, and there, and there. I see them. Our prayer is that God would strengthen you all on this day, I know the day is a difficult day for you, but I pray that, the God, that God would undergird you and strengthen you. And we give honor to your hero that gave their life for our freedom. Would you let these families know we love them and we appreciate them. Upon enlistment or being drafted in the United States Armed Forces, soldiers are asked to assume the risk of possibly putting their lives in danger for our freedom. When we really think about it, it takes an incredible person to face the possibility of war and the possibility of giving their life in order to save lives, the lives of people that they've never even met. John 15 and 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Just as Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross of Calvary so that we may be free, so too have many of our nation's soldiers sacrificed their lives so that we may be free. Today as we celebrate Memorial Day weekend, we would like to express thanks for the brave souls willing to make such a sacrifice for our country and for our freedom. Psalms 116 and 15 comforts us with this verse. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Losing a loved one is devastating. However, we can take comfort in knowing that God holds those soldiers close who have been born again in Christ Jesus. So today we thank God for their rest in him. 
Today we thank God for those that are still serving our country in and out of harm's way. Today we thank God for every soldier that has made it back home. We pray for the soldiers that suffer with post-traumatic stress disorder. We pray that God will heal their emotional wounds. Psalms 34 and verse 18 offers us comfort by letting us know that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. As we celebrate Memorial Day, remembering our following, fa fallen heroes can be painful. And if that's you, our prayer is that you will surrender your heart to the Lord and that you will be, I'm sorry, that you will experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Memorial Day is a time of remembering and honoring not only those we have, we have loved and lost, but also those veterans who have returned home to us. Can you imagine what the world might be like if our soldiers were not serving, defending the rights of our freedom in countries around the world? These men and women, as they stand and watch at their posts, give us the greatest gift that we all hold dear to our hearts called freedom. So what I'd like to do is I'd like for us all to take a moment of silence in remembrance of those who have given their life for our freedom. Amen. This morning we have set up before you a fallen soldier display, or sometimes better known as the Battlefield Cross, in honor of all the soldiers that have served in the armed forces and have given their life. This memorial symbolizes our commitment to remember, honor, and impart value regarding the price paid for our freedom. This should be our mission for every person in the United States of America to embrace who lives under the flag of liberty. During our brief history as a nation, hundreds of thousands of our finest have laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. Approximately 80, 83,000 over the last century alone were captured and suffered unspeakable torment while others became missing and have not yet been found. Meanwhile, countless others have sustained injuries, some of which healed while others suffered life-altering wounds, leaving, leaving the, the veteran to cope daily with the remembrance of their hard-fought battle that sometimes caused post-traumatic stress disorder and the like. Therefore, let us thank all the men and women who have suffered on our behalf for the cause of liberty, and most especially those who have given their lives for our freedom. At this time, I would like to call your attention to the Battlefield Cross Memorial displayed before us. Before us stands a rifle that has been placed carefully within a pair of worn boots, capped with a Kevlar helmet. The rifle is dra draped with the soldier's dog tags and Kevlar vest. This display is known as the Battlefield Cross and serve as a memorial to those who have perished in battle. This battlefield cross has its origins dating back to the Civil War when soldiers were hastily buried between battles. The rifle would be used as a marker when the soldier was killed in battle, of which the soldier's weapon would be stabbed into the ground to mark their final resting place, and anything that could be used to identify the fallen soldier would be placed on the rifle so others would know who eternally rested there. Today, service members on the battlefield often are unable to attend the funerals of their fallen brothers and sisters in arms way. So the battlefield cross is placed in honor of those who have perished as a way for the soldier to pay their respect 
to the fallen hero. Let us now review the meaning of the items that comprise the soldier's cross. The rifle, the rifle with a band and a fix is the most important tool to a United States fighting man or woman. It is the core to their livelihood and key to their survival. It is thrust into the ground signifying that the one being remembered died in battle, fighting to the end. It also signifies that the battle is over when the rifle is left this way. The boots. The boots carry a service member through the fight for our freedom. They are the first and most important means of transportation. The boots are placed at the base of the rifle. They are worn and dirty, reminding us of that final march to that last battle. And then the dog tags. The dog tags are worn by each service member. They have imprinted into them all the important information identifying them regarding that individual. The dog tags are hung from the rifle so that the name of the fallen hero will never be forgotten. And then finally, the helmet. The helmet is an important piece of protection on the battlefield. Some believe that the hat or the helmet of the individual represents what that person stood for. And so the helmet is placed on top of the rifle, signifying that the battle is over and that a great sacrifice has been made. It will never be worn again. So the soldier's cross or battlefield cross today stands in tribute and memory as we honor, we remember, and we tell them and the family we will never forget. So what I'd like to do at this time, I would like to recognize the veterans present by asking, if, if you will, as your song is played uh, that represents the armed services that you served in, the branch that you served in, if you would come and stand at the altar. Amen. Some of you can come up on the platform if you don't mind. Send the others up on the platform. Just come up here.
At this time, each veteran is being given a cross, this ceramic, this red, white, and blue, just to say thank you for serving your country. But I'd also like to include those that serve in law enforcement or in, um, for our fire department as well, if you are here. Law enforcement and fire department, if you guys would come to the front. Once again, let them all know we appreciate every one of them and the, and the supreme sacrifice that they've paid. Let me, let me, real quick, how many of you have been in, um, in a war zone? Raise your hand. I want you to look. Freedom's not free, but we're glad you made it home. Amen. Amen. Once you receive your cross, you may be seated. I'm asking if everyone would please stand as we prepare for communion. While you're preparing com for communion, let me recognize, recognize our guests. Um, Kelsey Tool. Where's Kelsey? Kelsey Tool. Kelsey Tool. Are she any kin to Mitchell Tool? No. Amen. Um, how about Brent Turner? Brent Turner. Amen. Would you like to recognize them? Amen. Um, let them know we appreciate them being here. Amen. Um, is it uh, Lalinda? Is that right? Uh, Liliana. I'm sorry. Torres. Where's Liliana Torres? Liliana Torres. Good to have Liliana with us today. And uh, Sharon Gardner. Where's Sharon? Give Sharon a good international praise. Welcome. Amen. How about Burl um, Dolan? Is that right? Dolan? Burl? Beryl? Beryl? Did I say it right? Burl? Good, did I say it right? Amen. Good to have you guys with us. Amen. Give all of our guests a good international praise welcome. Amen. We ask you if you would grab a hold of your communion cup. Also, our translator's beautiful family is over to the left. Would you give them a good international praise welcome as well? Amen. I don't have the card, so I, right off the top of my mind, I, didn't, I couldn't recall your name, but you're welcome into the house of the Lord. Amen. All right, if you will, take your communion cup, peel back the first layer, exposing the wafer. And as you're doing that, I'm going to ask you, if you will, take a reflection upon your life. If there's anything standing between you and the Lord as I say this prayer, I want you to make it right. The Bible warns that we should not partake in communion in an unworthy manner. Amen. Father, if there's anything standing between me and you, knowingly or unknowingly, before I partake in the sacred sacrament, we ask God that you forgive us in the name of Jesus. The Word of God says, and as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. He is the ultimate soldier. He's the soldier of all soldiers. He paid the price so that we would all be able to be free. In Jesus' name, amen. Ask if you will, peel back the second layer.
exposing the juice. The word of God says, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for your son. Thank you for the blood that was shed on Mount Calvary. For without the blood, my sins would still be exposed. But because of the blood of your son, when you look down, you don't see me. You see the, your son's righteous blood who makes me righteous in your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Ask if you would, please take your communion cups, pass them towards the center aisle, and the ushers will be more than happy to assist you. Let's sing that song, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Oh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me But the blood of Jesus, oh precious, oh precious, is that flow that that makes me white as snow? No other found I've known. Yes, nothing but the blood of. Sing it like it means. You ready to give? Say amen. amen. All right, let's do our confession and offering time. As we give today in our offerings, we're believing the Lord for jobs, for better jobs, benefits, raises, and bonuses, sales and commission, settlements of estates and inheritances, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts homage, witch inventions, and entrepreneurial spirit for the advancement of the kingdom and blessings for our families. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship. Good morning, International Praise. Celebrate the joy of love and new life. Sign up for baptism today online or in the Connect Center. The Global Leadership Conference will be August 9th and 10th. The South Carolina Church of God Camp Meeting is June 10th through the 15th in Malden, South Carolina. The Hispanic Camp Meeting will be held here at International Praise on June the 16th. Baby Dedication is next Sunday, June the 3rd, during the 11 a.m. worship service. Sign up online or in the Connect Center. Capital Campaign Dinners will also be next Sunday, June the 3rd. Menu is roast beef, rice and gravy, cabbage, sweet tea, and dessert. Bait chicken can be substituted. Place your order today online or in the Connect Center. The Church of God youth camps are quickly approaching, so parents, please see Pastor Donna or Pastor Chris for more information and applications to send your child to youth camp. There are several dates available for your child to have a fun and exciting time at youth camp. You can visit South Carolina Church of God youth.com, S-C-C-O-G youth.com. Impact Kids Volunteer Training is Monday, June the 4th. Support our Impact Kids by purchasing an Impact Kids shirt or other products available. See Pastor Donna or any Impact Kids parent or volunteer with an order form. This fundraiser ends this Thursday, May the 31st. 
We are getting ready for our Costa Rica missions trip. Help us by donating any individually wrapped part candy. Donation trunk is located by the Connect Center. Connect, get involved by volunteering in a ministry and becoming a part of a life group. Join us for Word and Prayer on Saturdays. And as always, love God, love others, and reach the world.
sword, your Bible, and turn with me to the book of Judges chapter 15. This is the last message on this series entitled The Pushback Anointing. 
while you're turning there, let me just um, educate and also just speak to the body just for a moment, if you don't mind. Um, one is close to 12 o'clock. Past two Sundays have been special Sundays. Um, but I can tell you this, your food is going to be fresh. How's that? They'll, they'll, they'll cook you some fresh food, okay? Um, but the altar area, and when it comes to the altar call, we have trained altar ministers, people who've gone through training, and we did that to protect what happens at the altar. We don't want just anything and anyone putting their hands on people, okay? And so um, just if, if you desire to work the altar ministry, please go through altar. You can sign up for altar ministry training. And I know we've got a lot, and, you know, Pastor Carolyn and I probably have to talk about putting people on rotation, if you will. I, I appreciate you wanting to work the altar, but we got to protect what takes place here, okay? Um, also, um, selling and soliciting your business on Sunday morning. I don't think the church is, that's the place for it. So as a pastor, I ask if you have your own business or whatever, on Sunday morning, it's about God, it's about worshiping Him. And we've, we're putting together a brochure that will list all the different businesses that are associated with the church, and we'll make it available to different people. As a matter of fact, you'll probably get more people that way. But I would ask that you do not go to different people in the church selling your product. Is that fair enough? Can we give God praise for that? Y'all still love me, right? Do we have her picture ready? We don't have it? You do. Um, I regret to inform you that one of our beloved has gone home to be with the Lord. An awesome woman of God, 40 years of age, suffered with since last October or November. Um, I can't look at you, Pastor Nair, right now because I'm going to get teary-eyed just like you are, and I, I'm already emotional. But um, she, she was faithful to the house of God. She was an administrator. Amen. She was a warrior. She was a confidant. She was an armor bearer to Pastor Narek and Wanda. And she was here. And, you know, sometimes we think, well, I've got plenty of time. Well, 40 years of age. So today we pray for Dennis and Taisha and Nanoshka and Juan as they prepare for her homegoing celebration. Tonight at 5 o'clock from 5 to 7 at Carnegie Mosley Funeral Home on um, Harsh Gravel Road, is going to be the viewing. And tomorrow at 11 o'clock right here at International Praise, we will have her homegoing celebration. If you can come, please come, and let's show our, show our love and respect to Juan. And listen, this couple, Juan and Leslie, has only been married like three years, but I'm going to tell you something. You're talking about a prince of a guy? Oh, my goodness. She was blessed when she found Juan. Amen? All right. You love me? All right, here we go. Judges chapter 15, beginning in verse 14. The Word of God says, And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found the new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Ramathlehi. And he was sore athirst, and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. 
And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore, he called the name, therefore, in Hakor, which is in Lehi until this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines for 20 years. Father, we thank you for your word, and we ask your anointing to rest upon us now as we endeavor to break the bread of life in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. This is the final part of the series entitled The Pushback Anointing. And if I must say myself, I've enjoyed this series because I believe that, it is, that this series has given us another way or a different perspective on how to handle the attacks of the enemy when the enemy comes against us. But here is what I want us to understand at the close of this series. So often... In our lives and in our walk with God, we go through these peaks and valleys. We go through these ups and downs. We have valleys and we have mountaintops that have to be negotiated in order for us to determine the livelihood of our future. And, and, and I believe that every one of us can agree that life can be difficult at times, especially when no one is there to walk beside us. That's why it's vitally important that we have a relationship with God. Because when no one else is there, He is there. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Listen, He is always there. So I want us to all remember that when our backs are against the wall, that he is the power, he, that the Holy Spirit is there, and that he is the power to push back against the powers of darkness. When the enemy comes up against you, we need to have that friend with us, knowing that he's there, calling upon him. At times we have to go back and we need to reflect upon what God has done in the past in order to remind us of the fact that if God saw us through then, then he will do it again. The Bible is full of people that fought a good fight of faith and won the battle. However, each one used different means of defeating the enemy under the anointing of God. Listen, if we're going to win the battle that is set before us, we can't do it the same way every time. And so my first point this morning is, is this, is that God will not fit in a box. You, you can't put God in a box. I, I know in the Old Testament that there was the Ark of the Covenant and the most holy place, and I, I know it, God's presence was there. But can I remind us all that that Ark could not contain God. This building cannot contain God. Every person in this, in this room cannot contain God. Every, the universe cannot contain God. But too often what happens is we put, try to put God in a box. And we should never have the mindset that puts God in a box. But too often we shortchange ourselves by thinking too small. The, you see, the God that you and I serve is too big to be held down by the parameters of our own limitations. This is why supernatural faith is essential. Supernatural faith causes us to move under the inspiration and the prompting of the Holy Spirit of which when we're moving under the unction and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, what has happened is God has given us distinct orders. He's given us distinct orders, and when he gives us those distinct orders, when we get up and we follow them, what happens is it causes a shift to take place in the spirit realm that causes a pushback against 
the enemy that is fighting against us. It's sort of like the children of Israel standing on the brink of disaster at the Red Sea. If y'all would just leave that up, because if you think about that, that that's the imagery of when God, if you want something in the natural realm that can give you the perspective of God standing there with one hand this way, one hand this way, and, and even with his eyes focused in front of you and also knowing what's going on behind you, he listen, he's an omnipotent, all-powerful God. And when he steps in the midst of a, of a situation, what it does is it pushes back and it creates a barrier between the, the obstacle and you that enables you to walk through in victory. So if you've ever wanted an image to say in, in the middle of a battle, in the middle of a trial, that, that if, if, if God shows up, this, this is a clear picture because when your back is against the wall, it's like Moses, he's, he, God tells him, he says, stretch your hand, uh, your, your rod out over the sea. And, and we, we know, we sing about it, we talk about it. And all of a sudden, uh, God, the God, that the all-powerful God, the, the one who has the ability to push back everything, he steps in the middle of your obstacle. And all of a sudden, uh, you walk through in victory. Listen, we must realize that in order to please God, we must do what God tells us to do. Amen. For our lives, we've got to do it for ourselves, and but we also have to do it for our church. We have to see we have to be willing to be obedient because that's when God shows up. When we are doing his bidding and we're walking in the center of his will, his, his pushback power, his anointing comes upon us. Listen, we can't and sit still even when the enemy pursues us to the point that we feel that our backs are against the wall. Do, do we know why? It's because our God pushes back against the obstacles that stand in our way of fulfilling his will for his kingdom. You see, in, in the Old Testament, God used Noah to stand by a construction site to proclaim repentance. God used Joseph as a king to save his people from famine. In other words, God said, I choose you, and I put my anointing on you. And because he put his anointing on an individual, what it did was it pushed back the very thing that was meant to bring them down. He used Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace, and he's in the midst. He's a fourth man walking in the midst of the fiery furnace and he's pushing back the flames of the fire in so much that they can come out. He, he Listen, die, Daniel in the lion's den, he's a pushback power that's pushing back the lion who said, you know what, I'm not going to eat this fella. You know why? Because I see my creator. I see the one who can bring me in, brought me in, and he's the one who can take me down. He's, he's a pushback power. He used a wild man by the name of John the Baptist that's Stand up and proclaim. Today is the day of salvation. He preached repentance. And under the anointing, people that were bound in, in sin, all of a sudden they said, you know what? I believe that I need to repent. And when they were repented, they what they did was they were baptized. But then here comes Jesus walking and, G, and, and John the Baptist tells them, you know what? I'm not worthy. And listen, I baptize you in water. He said, but there's one that cometh after me that's going to baptize you, baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Not many days since. He looked over the horizon, and guess what? He calls Jesus. He sees Jesus coming on the horizon. He is the Holy Ghost baptizer. He's the one who anoints us with fire. Hello, somebody. He's the one that endues us with power. Hey, the same power that was in the Red Sea is the same power that he poured out in Acts chapter 2. The same power that he puts upon men and women that breaks the yoke of bondage. Somebody help me preach in this place if you don't mind. 
He used a big mouth disciple by the name of Apostle Peter. Amen. He put his anointing upon him. And after his denial, he encouraged his brethren and amen and strengthened his brethren. And today, this is what I want us all to understand. I'm telling you today that I believe that if, if we will just grab a hold and, and seek the power of the Almighty God and the anointing. You see, today, God has chosen to use common, ordinary people people like you and I as he has done in times past to complete the work that he has called us to do. And can I tell you, our main character in the Bible this morning of this scripture this morning is a man by the name Samson. And I believe that Samson was as ordinary as any other man found in the Bible and as, as ordinary as any other man or woman who's found here today. However, there is one thing that made him different from those around him of his day as, as had many others in the Bible. It was something that made him a Extremely unordinary, and the word of God proclaims that the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. I'm going to say it again because I don't believe sometimes it, that we recognize the fact that we need to be pursuing God. I, last week we challenged on the day of Pentecost that we need the power of the Holy Spirit, that we need to be endued with power from on high. But listen, there's something about this that it says that the Spirit of the Lord moved mightily upon him. I wonder if there's any people in here this morning that would say, I want the Spirit of God to move mightily upon me. If, if you're looking for somebody to use, you can use me. The second thing I want you to know is this, is that the anointing causes us to become extraordinary. I'm going to say it again. The anointing causes us to become extraordinary. The anointing will turn mediocrity into the supernatural, where the average becomes extraordinary. And so it was with Samson, where God moved on Samson, and he was able to catch the foxes, tie their foxes' uh, foxes' tails together, set their tails on fire, let them go, and they'd run through the Philistines' field and catch their harvest on fire in so much it made them mad it stirred them up are you with me it was an it was anointing that came upon him where he was able to horse the gates of Gaza and carry them out of the city it was the anointing that came upon him where he was able to put one hand on one pillar and one hand on the other pillar and under the anointing of God push those pillars of that tabernacle and destroy everyone inside that temple that day. It was the anointing that made the difference. Look to your neighbor and tell them it's the anointing that makes the difference. But most people today must understand the process that an individual goes through to gain the anointing. We hear people pray around the altar, Lord, send me the anointing. And in reality, they don't know what they're asking for. In the Old Testament, the word anointing is introduced in the book of Exodus when God gave Moses the ingredients for the anointing oil in which the basic ingredient was the olive and the oil that came out of the olive as a result of being crushed. It was only when the olive had been pulverized that the oils began to flow. Therefore, when we ask God to anoint us, what we are asking God to do is pulverize us so that the purest oil will come forth. Now, wait a minute. I uh, Really? I mean, you know, where's the people who say, I'm willing to go through the agonizing process of becoming an awesome man or woman of God? Where, where are the people who say, I'm willing for you to get the hammer out and to fashion me, if you will. Come here, Brother Joe, if you don't mind. Fashion me like, like, like the, the, the smiths of, of old, if you will. When, when, they would, when they would make 
the, 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 the bowls of, of the tabernacle together. They'd get the hammer out. And what they'd do is they'd take the, the bronze or the gold and they would just start hammering. A, they should start hammering away. And you know, sometimes for, for God to beat you into the place where and the shape that he wants you to, to be, sometimes... It's a little painstaking. Uh, no, no, we got to get some stuff under here. Amen. There you go. Amen. There you go. Tighten it up, baby. Amen. Give me a tummy tuck, too. I'm going to get Are you with me? You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes uh, we, we don't like the agonizing process that we go sometimes uh, in, in order to get where God wants us to be. Somebody give God some praise in this place if you don't mind. You see, the anointing will turn the mediocrity into the supernatural. So, so we hear those that pray around the altar, Lord, send the anointing. In the Old Testament, the word anointing is, it comes from the book of Exodus. And so we have to go through this pulverizing process. Therefore, when we ask God to anoint us, we're asking God to, 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 to pulverize us so that the clearest oils may come forth. And I'm in my office this morning, and I'm writing, and I begin to think about all the different things that the, the body's going through. I'm thinking about what's going on in the world all around us, things coming down this way, things coming that way, things coming over here, things are over here, things are over here, it's these things back behind us, and I think sometimes we look at what's taking place in our lives, and we push it back as just being an attack, but could it be that what God is doing is he's looking down, and he said, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get some good oil flowing in the house of God, I'm trying to get some pulverizing, I'm trying to get some I'm trying to determine who's on my side and who's not on my side. I'm trying to determine who's going to bow their knee before me or they're going to bow their knee before the enemy. I'm trying to tell you God's saying this. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. In other words, God said, listen, this isn't time to play around. So this is what I feel in my spirit. Don't you dare look at what's going on around you and in your world. Don't you look at the trials and the tribulation that you're going through as being a bad thing. No, what God's doing is God's preparing you for some clear anointing. He's clear, He's preparing you for some fresh oil to flow out of you. What I'm talking about is some oil that will break the yoke of bondage off of other people's lives where they'll be able to look and say why in the world can you live and act and be like that when you've been attacked here. You've been attacked there. You've been hit there. I'll tell you why. Because greater is he that is within me than he that's within the world. Though he slay me, yet. You see, the apostle Paul, he went through this agonizing process. So some pure oil would be able to flow through him. Inasmuch they were able to take pieces of his garment and to pass it on to others, and they would be able to be healed. I've come to find out that only after a man has been brought down to the lowest base component that God can use him to the fullest of his potential, that at times God has to allow us to go through the agony of being pulverized by the circumstances around us to bring, a, bring forth the death of our flesh to allow the purest soil. In other words, the anointing to flow from us that will impact the lives around us. You've you got to hear me. Every great man of God, without fail, goes through the agonizing process of being fashioned in the image of the Lord to become an instrument for the anointing to flow out of. I have found that after the greatest defeat comes the greatest victory. And with the greatest victory comes the greatest defeat. Why is this? Why does this happen? Mainly, I believe it has more to do with us than it does with anything else. If somehow we could just stay humble when we're on the mountaintop, if we could just stay humble when we're in the valley. The Bible says, therefore, if we just stay humble in the sight of the Lord, that the Word of God says that He will lift us up. It's God who gives us the strength, the 
be able to fight against the powers of hell. But too often what happens is when the battle comes, we listen and we exalt ourselves and instead of exalting God and we have to be humbled again. God's got to bring us back to the place. I believe that's one of the problems in the churches around the world today, especially in the United States of America. We've become so high-minded. We know how to do church. And therefore people said, God, we don't need you. Don't worry about it. We've got this all figured out. Well, God says, you know what? You've got Ichabod over your door. My glory has departed. If you don't want me, then guess what? It'll, ju- it'll be just a good old social club. But if you'll just humble yourself, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. Hello? My third point is this, is there's a price to be paid for the anointing. Samson went through the pulverizing process and crushing to receive his anointing. Therefore, the anointing did not come without a struggle. From the very first time he felt the Spirit of the Lord move on his life, he began to struggle with other people. In the preceding verse, we reread of his own kinsmen and fellow citizens coming to take him to the Philistines. But up until this point, no one had ever risen up against him until the anointing was evident in his life. If you think just because the anointing is on your life that everybody's going to like you, listen, you got another thing coming. The Philistines camped out at Lehi because of what Samson had done to their field, and they were mad. And so Samson's comrades became discouraged And they were afraid, and they came to ask Samson what he had done. And Samson replied, as they have done to me, I did the same thing to them. So tit for tat. However, they had already become so wrapped up in complacency and indifference that at any cost, they just wanted the Philistines out of their territory so the threat of their defeat would be gone. Could could they have possibly missed out on the opportunity to find liberty for themselves again. Instead of turning against Samson and delivering him up into the adversary's hand, why didn't they join forces with him? Because truly God had risen up a man of whom the Spirit of the Lord was upon and the victory was evident for them if they would have only come together and fight. I I mean, really. I mean, they'd risen up someone. But far too often, in in the middle of adversity, people's eyes are focused on the adversary instead of the means of deliverance. I mean, we could have a hundred different things going good and one bad thing happen in our life and we get folks gets on the one bad thing. Whereas a hundred good things have happened. And so we lose focus. Uh, Listen, a body that's been unified and focused on the mission uh, or vision cannot be defeated because God will walk them through the battle. We, we, we as a body of Christ must stand together and when the enemy comes in to devour one of our own, it's not time to turn them over to the enemy and to wallow in complacency. It's time to gather our armor and get ready for a fight that will ultimately give the devil a technical knockout by the hand of God. For at times God will raise up an individual in the midst of our camp and place the anointing upon him or her so the blaze of the anointing will set the fields of fire with God's presence. And can I tell you far too often we sell ourselves short. If anybody's got to have the anointing, it's got to be the preacher. You're you're right. He does have to. But I'm going to tell you something. I've got some good news to tell you. The total responsibility does not rest upon the man or the woman who stands behind this sacred pulpit. It rests upon every one of us. You know why? Because I read Acts chapter 2 where God said I will pour out 
out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So the same anointing that was on Samson, the same anointing that was on David, the same anointing that was upon Moses, the same anointing that was on Jeremiah, the same anointing that was upon Ezekiel, the same anointing is upon you. And listen, if you if we'll just say, hey, you know what? I'm just a firm believer. I, I don't have to be the only one. I believe that there's other people in this place that the anointing can come upon. And you know what? They can stand up with the fire and the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon their life and they can set the field ablaze. Hello. And when God's presence is burning bright in the midst of his people, people will come and watch the fire burn because they want to experience the freedom. Isaiah 10 and 27 tells us that it's anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. Notice in verse 14 that when the anointing came upon Samson, that Samson was loosened from the bands that held him. And, and so, listen, we say we want to be set free, but we don't want to pay the price for the anointing that breaks us free. Some of you got that. I need to say, and some of you didn't. We say we want to be free, but we don't want to, we don't want to pay the price for the anointing that breaks us free. And where the Spirit of the Lord, listen, so the anointing looses things off of people. The first stage of the anointing is the loosing effect on the people of God. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because Jesus proclaims in Luke 4 and 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to set at liberty them that are bruised. So the Word also proclaimed that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So when the bands of the enemy have been loosened from our hands, we should praise God for the anointing. Hands are used for praising and worshiping the Lord. So the enemy wants to tie us up. I, I, I remember the word that Jacob gave to Judah, which means praise. In the book of Genesis chapter 49, your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. It didn't say your hand would be on the neck of the enemy. It said it would be in the neck of the enemy. What this refers to is the grip that can be placed on an individual's neck where the nerves are pressed to the point of immobilizing your adversary. That, that's what we do when we raise our hands and we praise God. What we do is we press on the nerves of the enemy and we bring him down to his knees instead of you being on yours. I wish there were some people in this place that were under an attack of the enemy saying, listen, my hands are free. Get the pushback power, the power of God that's upon my life. It's pushing back. In other words, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. I don't care what they think. All I care is about what he thinks. Therefore, I, listen, my inhibitions where I used to care what people thought about my worship and how I preached or what I did or didn't do. I don't care. I didn't come to please you. I come to please the almighty God. Therefore, that anointing, it causes me to push back against if I was somebody that's under attack would just put their praise together and because when you do it's like reaching out in the spirit realm grabbing a hold of that devil's neck and putting it on the inside and making him immobilize it's like he just comes fumbling down why because listen it gets on his nerves I wish somebody would get on the nerves of the devil and give God some praise in this place Hey! Hold on, I'm going somewhere. So get your hands loose. Get your, listen, get your praise loose. And, and listen, the, the, there's a perception that comes with the anointing. There's just something about the anointing that brings clarity to how to win the battle. In verse 15, the word says, and he found a new jawbone of an ass. And, and listen, um, you've got to have perception that what God wants to give you to fight the battle 
is even there. You're in the middle of a battle, and it's like I started off this series. You've got to be trained. Okay, God, a thousand Philistines are coming at me. I'm all by myself. They, what in the world and how am I going to fight these Philistines? I looked over here. Nobody's on my left side. I looked on my right, and nobody's on the right. I looked behind me, and nobody was behind me. I looked before me, and all I see is the enemy coming at me. But then he looks over, and the Bible says that he found a jawbone of an ass. I want you to understand something. Little is much when God is in it. Listen, if God be for me, who can stand against me? I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you feel like you're surrounded by your adversary. You feel like, oh, hell is breaking loose in your life, but I've got something to tell you. Open your eyes. God's about to give you something to fight against your adversary. Somebody give God praise in this place. So how does a man kill a thousand men in one day? Did, did he just wave the jawbone of the donkey? Amen. How is it done? We believe that he fought one at a time. One at a time. Y'all say that with me. One at a time. He reached for one, put his praise on put it in his, in his neck, he mobilized that one, put him behind him, he reached out the second one, one, put it in his neck, put it in him, put him behind, took that jawbone, I praise you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, it's, listen, it's it's, it's all right when it's a hundred, but then you get the two hundred, then you get the four hundred and ninety-nine, but then you get the five oh one, then you get the five fifty, then you get the six hundred, then you get the six seventy-five, then you get the seven hundred, then you get the seven hundred and fifty. How do you fight so many things that are coming at you? I'm gonna tell you again, one at a time, one day at a time. Time, sweet Jesus. One devil at a time, sweet Jesus. I reach forth for the things that are before and I put those things behind me. I forget them. I put it behind me. One devil at a time. Somebody say, one devil at a time. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to ask if you will, all over this place, I'm going to ask if you will, just stand with me all over the house if you don't mind. So the very thing, this is what I've come on to tell you. I don't know who I'm talking to. I, I know I'm talking to me. One of the elders talked to me this morning. He says, so how you doing, Bishop? I, tell you, I told him, I said, one day at a time. One, one devil at a time. One thing at a time. And you know what? You need to forget some of those things that you've already defeated. Hello? You need to put them behind you and let them, let them stay behind you. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to. I, listen, this is for somebody. You're so stressed out about everything. You have an anxiety attacks. And you're trying to carry it yourself. And the Lord wants you to know, all he wants you to do is just, I'm going to walk with you through this. And he's saying, just take one thing at a time. Pray. Put your praise on. And just take one thing at a time. And he says, I'll give you the weapon. I'll give you the jawbone. I, 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 you know, the jawbone is this right here. 
to speak life through this. You stand and fight against your adversary. And you grab a hold one at a time, reach forth, put it behind you. So Samson fights a thousand Philistines. Can I tell you, you heard me say it before. Sometimes after your greatest victory is your, your greatest defeat. And can you imagine Samson fighting one at a time? He gets to 99 and he gets to 1,000 and all of a sudden, man, it's done. I'm a, and you know what? You're exhausted. And I told the, the early congregation this morning, I said, there's a lot of times after Sunday service, Ricky told me Wednesday after he preached on Wednesday, he said, man, I'm going to go take me a nap. Because it's one thing when the anointing's on you, but it's another thing when the anointing comes off of you. But when the anointing is off of you, you're in, your, you're in, you're in a, a weak moment, and you're, you're vulnerable to an attack of the enemy. And so, and so it's, it's, it's right there, if you will, that you need to put some parameters around you. You need, to, you need to put some barriers around you because you're vulnerable at that point. You need to have your spouse praying for you. You need to have others that are praying for you. You need to make sure things are in check. You're not left alone because you're vulnerable. Because this is what happens. Simpson's been under the unction. He's been under the anointing. He's been under the power. And one by one, one battle after another, he fought and he fought and he fought and he fought. And then finally, it's like the last one is done. And now he, 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 he realizes, man, I'm, I'm exhausted. My, and, he said, and basically, he looks at God and he says, I'm dying. My, 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 I've done all I can do. In the, uh, we've done this under the Spirit, but now my flesh, is, 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 the anointing has taken a toll on my flesh. And, 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 and he says, Lord, I need your help. And you know what happens? He, the very thing that Samson had taken and he had thrown to the side is the very thing that God took and, and, and honed out, if you will, a hole in the jawbone of a donkey. Now, I want you to think about that. It, it wasn't clean. It wasn't sanctified. It had the blood of a Philistine's opponent. But I'm going to tell you something. When that water came out of that jawbone, it was the water of life. It was pure. It was holy. It was sanctified. And what it was, exactly what he needed to be able to restore himself. I Listen, I don't know what battle you've been going through. I don't know how much blood is on whatever you've been fighting with, but I've come by to tell somebody that maybe you just need to go back to what you had when you were winning the battle and ask God to pour something fresh and a new opponent so that you'll be able to fight another day. Somebody give God praise in this place. This is what I want. This is what I want. I want you. I want. I, I want. I want some people who says, you know what? I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say. But right now, I'm in a battle like I've never been in before. But right now, I'm stepping out in faith, and I'm going. Listen. Sometimes you got just like Doug Small says, you have to do symbolic action. Symbolic action means you have to solicit an action that brings forth a response. That means I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna grab put it behind me. I'm going to reach for another one and put it behind me. I'm going to reach for another one and put it behind me. Symbolically, that may be what you need to do right now. You just need to get up and say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I'm reaching forth for the things that are before me, and I'm going to put it behind me in Jesus' name. So listen, right now, if, if, if you're in a battle, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get out of your seat. And I, I don't care if you come to the altar. I don't care if you walk around the aisle. I don't care what you do. But I want you, and, and by a step of faith, I want you to believe like Samson that you're fighting one at a time. They're going to sing one day at a time, sweet Jesus. I know we're going way back there, but sometimes that's the way. Listen, I don't eat. Sometimes you just got to take things one day at a time. Don't you worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. One day.
day and one devil at a time. Somebody give God praise. Come on. One, one day. day at a time. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Come on, sing it. That's all I'm asking. Pastor for Carolyn, where you. are you? Yeah. Where's Pastor Just Carolyn? Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Come on, if you need, you're in battle right now, and you're going to say, I'm going to stand against the powers of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, the worst is now than then. Cheating and stealing, yeah. Violence and crime. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day. the battle. 
Make up your mind you're going to serve me. With every fire of your being, there's a price to be paid. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Let it be so. And tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way. One day at a time. Get down there, brother. One day at a time. Get, get down there. Sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Amen. Father, touch his eyes. I pray for favor. God, with the, all the paperwork that's already been filled out, I pray for favor. You know what's me. Show him, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch his eyes. Touch his physical body. Touch his mind. Touch his spirit. 
Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Sing it one more time before we close. to climb, Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you, just give me the strength. Do everything what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show Thank you, Lord.
Say, do it, Lord. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, let's give God praise if you don't mind in the house of the Lord. All right. Don't forget the announcements tonight. The viewing for Leslie Cologne, beautiful woman of God, is at Hard Scrabble Road, Cornegie Mosley Funeral Home. If you could please be there, go by, pay your respects. Also, tomorrow at 11 o'clock here at the church, just come out and help us celebrate her life. We didn't get to get around to shake your hands. If you don't mind, look to somebody and shake their hand and say, Pastor Roberts gives his greeting. If you're our guest, we'd love to meet you in the hospitality room. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Come back. We'll see you um, tonight, maybe Sunday, I mean Monday or Wednesday.